watching this video for the first time and haven't seen part one, I highly recommend checking out my previous videos. Welcome back everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to make this annealer. Let's break this down one part at a time. Okay, so I ordered most of my products off of eBay and Amazon. And let me give you this word of advice if you live in the United States. Make sure you click on US only for your products. Trust me, the last thing you want to do is order some of your products from China and wait three weeks for them to come in. You should be able to find an adapter on either eBay or Amazon for roughly five to eight dollars shipped. Just make sure it's 12 volts, two amps, with a two and a half millimeter adapter at the end of the wire. Next, I centrally located a DC power socket, a female metal jacket socket with a 2.5 millimeter center pin. And I purchased mine off eBay for roughly $3, with $2.60 economy shipping in the United States. Next is the case itself. I got mine from www.mauser.com and it's the Hammond part number 1456KH3BKBU enclosure box. Shipped $35.31. Next is the prop adapter that attaches the drum to the motor. I got mine off eBay for roughly $6, and this one shows $2 economy shipping. One quick note on the prop adapter, your motor has an 8mm shaft, so make sure the prop adapter matches. So here's the scoop on the motor. If you want the motor cheap, you're going to have to bite the bullet and get it from China. You can get it off Amazon and eBay at a premium if you want to get it from the United States as fast as possible. If you want to save some money, you're going to have to get it from China and wait roughly three weeks. Just make note that the prop adapter and the motor itself has an 8mm shaft diameter. You're more than welcome to use any other motor that you want. You just got to make sure that the shaft diameter and the prop adapter match. The motor that I selected was actually pretty long and protruded out the back of the case. And that's the reason for this plastic outlet cover, which I got from a local hardware store, roughly $1. As for the drum itself, it all depends on the size of the cartridge you're reloading for. The reason why I went with a Fat Daddy-O's round cake pan, 5 inches in diameter by 2 inches, is so I could cut it down. The depth of the drum is completely dependent on the size of the cartridge you're annealing. Currently I reload for 308, 223, and 6.53 more. So in order to make sure my drum worked for all three cartridges, I cut my drum down to one and a quarter inch. So keep this in mind when buying your drum and cutting down your drum. Shit. The 12 volt motor speed controller with digital display and switch I got off eBay for roughly $11. Now that the main parts are out of the way, let me show you how I actually put this annealer together. I cut the ramp out of a piece of 2 inch by 2 inch aluminum stock with a Dremel tool and a hacksaw. 1 inch by 3 and 1 half inch. Wait until the drum is mounted to custom trace and cut the angle iron to match. Make sure when tracing the ramp that the back of the ramp and the back of the drum are flush. I spaced the ramp off the case itself with two nuts and used approximately three washers on the front and two washers on the back to space the ramp off the case. Don't forget the two extra nuts 
that actually mount the ramp on the inside of the case itself. Using a grinder, I rounded off all the edges. Buy some extra washers and adjust as needed. I kept the bottom of the ramp at a full two inches. You never know what cartridge you might reload in the future. Before cutting this angle, make sure that the drum is mounted, turned on, and is spinning in a perfect circle. There's no wobble whatsoever. Drilling the holes and mounting the ramp is the trickiest part of this annealer. With the rubber feet attached to the bottom of the case, I came up with approximately four and a quarter inches on the very bottom of the ramp on the front side and five and three quarters of an inch on the bottom side of the ramp on the back side. Now I can't stress this enough, the actual location of the ramp mounted to the case is completely dependent on the exact location of the drum. Don't go off my measurements. You might have to fool around with the actual location of the ramp. So wait until the drum is mounted. As for the drum itself, as stated previously, I cut it to one and a quarter inches deep with approximately an inch and a quarter notch. The notch and the depth of the drum I cut with the Dremel tool. Now I know the question you're asking me, how the hell did you cut down your drum? With an ultra fine black magic marker, I traced around the drum itself just to make sure I was staying on track. Then I clamped my Dremel tool to my workbench and adjusted the height as needed. Then I took my drum, laid it down flat, and spun it in a circle on top of my workbench against the Dremel bit. While spinning the drum against the Dremel bit, make sure you're staying on track and following your line. Now the next question you're going to ask yourself, how the hell do I make sure the hole I drill for my drum is perfectly centered? Well that's easy, just go on YouTube. There are a ton of videos that show you how to do it. <laughs> well seriously though, other than mounting your ramp, the second most important thing is to make sure that the hole you drill in your drum is perfectly centered. The hole drilled in the drum is obviously a tad bit bigger than the diameter of the prop shaft. With the rubber feet applied to the case, the center of the shaft is approximately five and three quarters. By three and one eighth of an inch. The exact location of that hole is completely up to you. Now the brass stopper, or whatever the hell you want to call it, was cut out of a two and a half inch U-bolt. This side that goes into the case, you run long, and custom cut the other side as needed. Don't forget to pick up two extra lock washer nuts, one for the outside and one for the inside. Now wait till the drum is mounted and is spinning before you mount the brass stopper. Reason why is you want this to be custom mounted to whatever you drill the center of this prop shaft. Now mine is approximately one and three eighths of an inch by three and a quarter inches tall. But like I said, wait till this is mounted and custom drill this hole as needed. With the speed controller itself, what I did is I put blue painters tape over the case itself to make sure I didn't scratch it and use the back of the speed controller as a template itself. Marked it out with my ultra fine black magic marker and then cut that out with the Dremel. You might want to cut the hole just a smidge, not too much, but just a little bit bigger than the back of the speed controller. It's hard to make the cuts as much as possible with the Dremel and then finished it off with a hacksaw. You're going to notice on the side of the speed controller display there's two plastic tabs. I cut those off and filed them down. The location of my speed control display 
It's approximately one and a half inches and about three eighths of an inch down from the top. If you do this rectangular cut good enough, it should fit snug enough and should be good to go. But if it's not, you might have to put a dab of silicone on each side on the back of the case just to hold it in place. Now for the on and off switch and the speed control, I'll leave that up to you. If you can't figure that out, I'm gonna take your man card away right now. <laughs> just kidding. Now removal of the drum is actually pretty easy. Notice I had to get another washer to space this out correctly. Don't forget to pick up three extra washers for your motor mount bolts. The prop adapter is attached to the motor shaft with Allen set screws. You might have to play with the depth of the bolts when mounting the motor and putting on the prop shaft adapter, and I'm sure you can figure it out. If you get a motor like mine, make note, the motor I got is long. It actually protruded out the back of the case. So I had to cut a rectangular hole in the back of the case and got this plastic electrical box. And don't forget, four bolts, four washers, and four nuts. The motor is mounted with a washer, a three quarter inch standoff screw, and two nuts working against each other to lock it in place. I drilled a three quarter inch hole in the case itself with a shaft prop just so it's a little bit bigger than the shaft prop diameter. And using the motor itself, I use it as a template to actually mark out the holes for the motor mounts. For this specific motor and speed control, and to make sure that the drum spins in the correct direction, I hooked up the white to negative and red to positive. As for the DC power adapter, and I guess, for me, I didn't think it was that big of a deal, being that this is low voltage. Whether it's red, black, or green, blue, I guess it didn't really matter. All I was concerned about was getting power from this power adapter to the speed controller itself. Attach the red wire to the right prong, black wire to the lower prong with solder, leaving the third prong blank. Then attach that red wire to the positive and the black to the negative. Make note that I had to cut and re-splice the on-off switch in order to get it mounted. Now I have this brass stopper set at a depth that will work for 6.5, 308, 223 brass. But if you're going to get an ultra deep drum, for ultra large cartridges, you might need to adjust this as needed. As for the propane holder, all it is is a U-bolt. I didn't even need to cut it. Go to the shelf, grab a propane tank, go where the U-bolts are at your hardware store and match it up. As for the feet, all you need to do is adjust these two nuts to whatever height you need. So this is snug, but you can still twist the propane tank. Then when you're ready to rock and roll, all you gotta do is just spin the tank to adjust the height needed. The U-bolt I purchased is approximately four inches long. Check back on a regular basis for part two, where we will continue your journey reloading this 5.56 and 7.62 Lake City brass. Putting the brass through a stainless steel wash for the first round to eliminate all carbon, especially from the inside of the case mount before annealing. Part two will continue the journey of eliminating the crimped primer pockets and then using this very annealer to anneal the brass right before sizing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please scratch my back and I'll continue to scratch your back by subscribing and liking this video. Stay tuned for part two.